Hello, ChompCast listeners. You are about to listen to an interview that I did with the legendary composer Nathan McCree. Nathan composed the soundtracks for Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3, uh, among many other projects. Uh, he's also currently in the throes of a Kickstarter for the Tomb Raider suite, which was a concert he did for that series. So this is going to be a treat for Tomb Raider fans, and honestly, if, you've, if you're not familiar with Tomb Raider, this is a, a really cool thing to listen to if you're a fan of our show, because I, <laughs> anyone who knows... Um, I have been just a huge admirer of Nathan McCree's work for a long time. So this was a very surreal and dreamlike interview for me, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Also, stay tuned at the very end of the podcast for a special sample of the Tomb Raider suite. Um, I got Nathan's permission to include this at the end of the podcast. And if you're intrigued, make sure you go check out his Kickstarter and support the Tomb Raider suite. Um, Otherwise, enjoy the show. Please be sure to, if you're enjoying the interview or the podcast, um, as always, it helps if you can subscribe and leave a nice rating for us wherever you download your podcast. Uh, It really helps Sword Chomp grow. Um, So here we go. Our interview with legendary Tomb Raider composer Nathan McCree. First off, you know, just thank you for making the time for me, um, especially in, in our, our show, our podcast, especially being a smaller podcast, but we're growing uh, at a good rate and, you know, taking time out of your busy life. The reason I reached out to you yes. was because, two, two reasons. Number one, I actually have been wanting to interview you for a long time. I'm a great admirer of your work. Okay. Um, really passionate, <laughs> not just Tomb Raider fan, but as someone who's also a composer, um, like... I really delve deep into your compositions, and I've dissected them, analyzed them. It's 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 really kind of weird, but <laughs> okay. But um, whenever you were starting this Kickstarter, I thought it'd be a perfect time to reach out to you because anything I could also do to help spread the word on this Kickstarter, I wanted to do because it's Fantastic. something I felt strongly about. Um, okay. So as we get started here, I wanted to give you a chance to kind of explain to our listeners a little bit about the uh, Tomb Raider Suite Kickstarter and. Um, so, you know, why it's something that they should go support, uh, it's something I, I strongly believe in. So, Okay, so the Kickstarter is to raise money to record the Tomb Raider Suite album using uh, a live orchestra. Um, it's it's going to be the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra at uh, the famous studios, Abbey Road Studios in London. And the reason why I decided to do a Kickstarter, firstly... Um, the the deal that I that I struck with Square Enix was that, uh, without disclosing any percentages, um, was that basically mm. I retained ownership or a large ownership of the project, and in return for that, it's my responsibility to provide funding for it. If I'd have expected Square Enix to provide the funding, then I would have had a much smaller share ownership. So that's the reason mm. why I decided to, to, to raise the funding myself. Um, now, the reason why I decided on Kickstarter specifically is because I felt that um, the fans could participate in the project a little bit more than, say, if I went to a recording company for the money, um, basically, again, they would be owning a large percentage and they would have creative and, and final say control over uh, over the album the artwork um different kinds of editions limited editions stuff like this basically that would have been all under the record company's control the fact that i've opened this up as a kickstarter and the fans are effectively uh financing the project through us pre-selling the album it means that mm-hmm. we can uh offer more unique rewards to them that, say, a record company would do. Um, We can offer all sorts of different merchandise, this kind of thing. We can offer 
um, uh, you know, opportunity to, to kind of join in at celebration parties, launch parties, um, all this kind of thing, which, which wasn't necessarily going to be the case had we got a record company involved. So that's why I thought it would be better to do a Kickstarter. I, I just feel like the fans could engage in the project more. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, yeah, because when I first saw it, I was a little confused because I knew you had done the Tomb Raider Suite concert. So when I saw you were doing uh, Kickstarter, I was like, what is this for? I don't understand. You already did it. And I was like, oh, you want to do? You want to get in there and record it in the studio and, and turn it into a full yeah, well, the, experience. Yeah, the, well, the live concert, um, you know, we, we obviously we had to get that funded as well. And so we partnered with Live, which is the uh, live entertainment division of Universal. And so mm -hmm. they basically funded the concert. Um, but again, you know, I, uh, my hands were tied quite a lot with um, creative decisions that were going on about, you know, what merchandise we were going to make, whether we were going to do a show program, what was going to go in it, all that kind of thing. It was very difficult for me to um, uh, put my suggestions into, into practice um, because, okay. you know, it, it wasn't my money, effectively. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we, we wanted to do the live concert and it was a really good success as, as far as uh, we were concerned, as far as the fans were concerned. Um, we didn't have the funding to actually record the live show, although I did make a recording of it, but I'm only allowed to use it for archive purposes. I can't sell it. Mm. So, <laughs> um, you know, I still wanted the album and the fans still wanted the album. So... I thought, in fact, it would be, be it would be better to do a studio album. Um, it means that we can get a really perfect performance. Um, you know, a, a recording of a live performance, there are mistakes all the way through it. I mean, not many other people would notice, but because I know the music very well, you know, I notice when the clarinets make a bum note <laughs> or the strings are a little bit late coming in or whatever. You know, I notice all those things. And when it's on a CD and you listen to those tracks over and over again, eventually you will hear those mistakes because you'll go, oh, yeah, yeah that, that's not quite right. See what I mean? On first listening, you don't notice. But once you, when you listen 40, 50 times, eventually you'll hear them. So I thought it would be better to do a studio album where we can get everything note perfect. We can re-record stuff if, if it goes wrong. We can fix things in the editing suite and stuff like this. So yeah. um, it makes for a, a more uh, pleasurable listening experience, I think. Um, and you know, it, yeah. if if we do raise in excess of our uh, our Kickstarter goal, and we've we've got you know plenty of money left over, I mean, obviously there's lots of things I want to do with uh, with extra money in terms of stretch goals. But um, you know, if there is any any money left over, then there is a possibility that I can buy the rights from the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra for the live mm. performance that we did in December. And then I can release that as an album, but I have to pay the orchestra first, and that's not cheap. Yeah, well, and you know, I guess we're thankful for I'm thankful for YouTube and all the people recording it from their phones or what else it was, because a lot of that has made it out there. <laughs> um, which yeah. has been it's only been nice because there's certain things that I, you know, for me, I obviously couldn't couldn't make it over there, but um, it gave me a taste of what it was all about, and that kind of leads me to next, my next question, because I'm, I'm really curious about the track uh, In the Blood okay. um, that you wrote, the new piece you wrote. Yeah. Um, just like, because like your mindset going into something like that, you, it, it's described whenever I watch the video sort of being like a celebration of the entire series in a way. Um, but I'm curious because the mindset of trying to write something new um, for something you wrote about you know, 20 plus years ago and, and still making it sound like it's cohesive, like it's part of that thing, yeah. and, and you did it. So I'm just curious what your mindset was. Uh, my mindset was, we haven't got much time, and I need to knock something out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, sometimes the best stuff can come that way. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was on a pretty strict timetable. I had uh, three days per track to either... Mm -hmm. Uh, remaster or extend or completely write from scratch. Um, so, you know, when it got to in, in the Blood, which I think was the 22nd track uh, out of all the tracks that I'd picked, it was the 22nd track that I was working on. I was closing in on the end of the project in terms of my time schedule. So, um, you know, I really couldn't afford to slip. Um, so, you know, 
but I think you know by that time, I've just I'd just been working on twenty one other tracks of of Tomb Raider from twenty years ago, so I'd kind mm. of got in the mode of that. You know, I'd got back into the project. Um, I got yeah. used to all the all the textures and the layers of instruments that I used back then. I sort of refamiliarized myself with that. Again, the chord structures were all sort of going through my head, so I, I was kind of fully immersed in Tomb Raider um, uh, by the time I wrote In the Blood. I think I'd already <laughs> spent three months in the studio. Wow, so okay. So only doing Tomb Raider. So, you know, I, I the, there wasn't anything else in my brain other than Tomb Raider. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a kind of composer that's, that's, that gets stuck or is short of ideas. That isn't my problem. Um, my 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 problem, I think, is, um, you know, what wanting wanting to perfect things and not having the time to do it. I think that that's my mm. biggest frustration. But I think you know a lot of p composers have that issue, particularly you know if if you're getting paid professionally for your work, you know, there's always a time limit, and um, yeah, you know, you could always do more and you could always make it better. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I think with the melodies and the harmonies for In the Blood, you know, I just wanted to kind of say the Tomb Raider melody in a slightly different way. Um, but you know, I, I, again, I, I was I was conscious about not steering too far away from the original style, that, you know, and and mm -hmm. that doesn't just go for In the Blood; that goes for all the tracks that I extended. You know. Um, yeah. They most of them have got new sections in them, um, and 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 I was very conscious about keeping it simple and and writing it in the same style that I did twenty years ago. Um, I, there were there were a couple of pieces where when I started extending them, I I found myself just overcomplicating it because I can write more complicated stuff now, you know. And I, and yeah, I had to kind yeah. of say to myself, no, that's too much. That's not that's not right. That's not how you would have done it. <laughs> yeah, like you've years grown ago. so much as a composer. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it's I found right. myself stripping stuff out and throwing stuff in the bin a little bit. Um, in 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 those first early tracks, anyway. Once I got into the project, I kind of settled into it a bit more. Yeah, that's tough. Did you, so is the name like uh, just a. Is there like some double subtext there that you just had Tomb Raider yeah. in your blood for so long? <laughs> yeah, well, the, yeah, in the blood is um, uh, it's basically uh, you know a message from Lara. A tomb Tomb Raiding is in her blood. It, it, it's that really. That that's where the connotation came from. But you know what? I wrote another brand new track for the Tomb Raider Suite, which nobody seems to have mentioned or picked up on at all. It's called Precious Moments, and that finished the end of the first half. It was the last track in the Tomb Raider Two section. Precious Moments. Okay. Yeah. Well, Tomb Raider nope. Two is like my my. Uh... That's my personal favorite of, okay. of all the albums, so I'll I will go YouTube that right away if I could find it. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know, those. I don't know whether anyone's posted that one, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Man. Well, another another reason I'm sure that will be on the uh, the album if it gets funded. So definitely, that would be definitely, reason. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Well, and that's that's cool because I was just wondering if the in the blood had the double meaning. But those are fascinating to me because they are new pieces, and like I've always sort of dreamed, and, and I, this may probably never happen, and maybe you get asked this a lot, but I've always had this dream of like I'm sure you've seen a lot of these Kickstarters coming up now for nostalgia pieces, like the ukulele Kickstarter and stuff like that. And um, there's like this hunger for nostalgia, and I've always sort of dreamed of like the original core design team getting back together and you know with like a kickstarter funded by the fans and making something that's deliberately nostalgic but new you know yeah yeah yes. so when i when, when i heard in the blood it reminded me of like if there was a new tomb raider game you know deliberately nostalgic that's what the music would have sounded like so it was really cool right okay uh, well thank you very much thank you very much I do, I do like the track um probably just because it's a new one but um yeah i do like it i feel like i wrote it well um, so yeah, I'm pleased with that. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 incredible. I was going to ask you about this. So the main theme for the first Tomb Raider. Uh, so uh, a two part question here. First of all, when you when you went to write the music for the original Tomb Raider, um, so the ad and the the ad campaigns and a lot of the marketing for the original Tomb Raider are legendarily sort of um, contrast. Uh, to the actual product you know the, the a lot of the early commercials and stuff i watched for the early tomb raider were very loud in your face tomb raider a lot of violence and stuff like that like a